Sponsored by Delete Me. Back at the start of this year, Oppo shook up the flip phone landscape with a little clamshell that packed a big standout, a cover display that, for the time, was the biggest you could find on a flip. When I factored in the better-than-average camera and the huge battery, the Find N2 flip convinced me that Oppo was finding its place in foldables. But that, as they say, was then. Scarcely eight months after that phone launched in Europe, Oppo is back with a Find N3 flip that adds another camera and a new side switch to a familiar, similarly slippery chassis. But the one thing Oppo could have done, the one thing I think it had to do to face down its 2023 competition, it hasn't. Let me just preface my complaints by saying this. I'm really glad Oppo is making flip phones because on the whole, it's really good at it. Recall my deep dive into the company's hinge designs for the Find N2 family. That same engineering underpinning is in use on N3, and it gives us the same fat teardrop fold in the flexible display that keeps the crease to a minimum. Even though Samsung has finally transitioned to a form of wide water drop on its Galaxy Flip 5, Oppo's implementation still produces a smoother surface where the actual folding happens. And for Find N3, Oppo redesigned the polarizer to make the screen easier to see with sunglasses and reduce the power consumption by about 20% so that big battery can last even longer. It's the same change Samsung made to its foldables about two generations ago, and it's a welcome one. Oppo also retained other stuff that worked on Find N2. The surface treatment on the spine, which translates light into a unique waveform-like pattern. The fast 44-watt SuperVOOC charging. And of course, that big cover display. While others are larger, this one has an aspect ratio that more apps understand, since it's taller than it is wide. The problem that Google Maps or Uber has on a wide screen with that big UI bar taking up so much of the space, not an issue on this mini phone on a phone. But Oppo missed an opportunity to leverage that perfectly shaped canvas when it released the Find N2 back in February, as I said then. Which means that Oppo, if it wanted, could let you run the entire phone without opening it. Instead, what it does is give you six widgets for your camera, your calendar, timers, voice memo, the forecast, and earbud management. And if that sounds familiar, <laughs> yep, you get almost exactly the same thing on the much smaller cover screen of the Galaxy Flip. So when Oppo invited me to the briefing for the Find N3 Flip, I thought, look, even if the hardware is virtually identical, at least they're going to jump at the chance to fill that functionality gap, especially considering the fact that Motorola and Samsung have leapfrogged them, right? Right? Wrong. The Find N3 Flip is still needlessly limited when closed. To be fair, you can do more than you could. A handful of titles have been whitelisted to run out here, but more than anything, it's salt in the wound. When I use Google Maps and see just how beautifully it scales, when I check in on Telegram and see how well the threads reformat for the smaller screen, well, all it does is remind me that I don't have another kind of threads out here, but I do have X. Or that I do have Uber, but I don't have Lyft. And if I want to reply to a message without opening the phone, well, I only have the keyboard in apps that Oppo has deemed worthy enough to code for. Oh, and bonus annoyance. As it was on Find N2 Flip, the hinge still won't keep the phone propped up at as wide a range of angles as Samsung, which makes banana phoning annoying, as does the fact that the screen doesn't reliably stay turned off when on a call. While in February these were little more than a nerdy guy's laments, now that we're in October, I would argue that running whatever you want on the cover screen is table stakes for foldables with screens of a certain size. Because Motorola and Samsung have normalized that in a very real and legally binding sense. And if you want to know why that's useful, check out my Razer vs. Galaxy Flip comparison from the summer. Oh, and hey, Oppo, where are the game snacks is stack bounce? Right, anyway, Oppo told me it plans to bring, quote, many more apps to the cover screen, with a heavy implication that it does plan to take on all comers at some point. Obligatory pre-production device running pre-release software. 
But review devices should be ready to be reviewed. Don't buy based on future updates, etc., etc. And it's just so frustrating to try to skip an ad in a podcast and be shunted to the Spotify widget instead. And speaking of ads, it's been a little over six months since I first told you about Delete Me, the simple service that gives control of your personal data back to you. In that half a year, Delete Me has reviewed over 4,000 listings from data brokers across the web for me, and it's removed my personal information from almost 80 of them. What kind of listings? Well, we're talking private information, like my physical address history, my property and court records, even the names of my family members, now scrubbed from nearly 80 data brokers' archives without me having to do any work on my own. That means Delete Me has saved me almost a full day searching and removing my personal information from the internet. And because data brokers are relentless, Delete Me is too. They'll repeat the process every three months as long as you're subscribed. Delete your personal data from the web. Visit joindeleteme.com slash Mr. Mobile and use code Mr. Mobile for 20% off. Thanks to Delete Me for sponsoring this video. Back to the N3 flip. Elsewhere, the hardware has an awful lot in common with its immediate predecessor, with a few notable exceptions. First is the new Dimensity 9200 processor, which is a more modern MediaTek than the last model, and I've had no complaints about either. A disclosure, I do host a podcast sponsored by MediaTek, but that does not affect my editorial interpretation of processor speeds. And I'm going to save the littlest exception for last because honestly, I've already waited too long to talk about this Cosmos Ring with Starlight Track, AKA a raised camera bump with a knurled edge. Now, I loved this look on Oppo's Find X6 Pro, but I'm not sure it really translates to a flip phone. Maybe it's the Hasselblad branding, which is only right side up when you hold the thing open in portrait mode, or maybe it's the scale of the whole ring, it just barely fits on there, I don't know. But Oppo did need the extra space, because this is the first flip phone to add a dedicated telephoto camera to its primary and ultra-wide options. Don't get too excited, because it's only 2x, a 47mm equivalent focal length that I've long considered effectively useless for zoom shots. I asked Oppo about this, and the company said a 3x lens would have required more thickness, which the design can't accommodate, or a smaller sensor, which Oppo didn't want to compromise on. So the company chose to focus on using the telephoto camera for portrait shots. Personally, those aren't my preferred picks to snap, and all this space above the camera seems to beg for a 5x periscope zoom assembly that would certainly be more of a crowd pleaser, even if Oppo had to sacrifice battery capacity to achieve it. But the Find N Flip has the luxury of competing in a space where the cameras just aren't that good. I only tolerate shooting with my Galaxy Flip 5 and Razer Plus, and I usually Snapseed every photo I do take. By contrast, Oppo's Hasselblad partnership has resulted in attention to color science that, I don't know, just resonates with me. I've said this enough times that I don't think I'm fooling myself or being taken in by the marketing. I almost always prefer the colors and contrast that Oppo can produce even if, in exchange, I need to put up with the occasional bit of HDR weirdness in the processing, or the palm detection not being as good as Samsung, or the limitations on shooting with video, like not being able to use that cover display to frame yourself up if you're shooting in 4K. You get busted down to HD for that. Despite all that, if I could pluck this camera off this phone and drop it onto my Razer Plus review unit, <laughs> I'd be a much happier X-Pan loving man. So why isn't the Find N3 Flip destined for daily driverdom in my world? Well, look, if this is your first flip phone, you've got a right to be excited by everything it has to offer. It's not remotely a bad product. But I've used every flip phone there is, and thanks to Motorola and Samsung, I know what it's like to be able to use almost all of a phone's features, whether it's open or closed. Believe it or not, that's a real boon when you're out living your life. And thanks to the Razer, I know what it feels like to have a phone basically disappear into my pocket because it's so slim and ergonomic. The Find N3 Flip is rumored to be cheaper, so maybe it's no surprise that it just doesn't rise to Motorola's level of hardware elegance. 
And the lack of wireless charging only reinforces that it's not a device destined for the US. That brings me to that last bit of hardware I wanted to talk about, which thankfully lets me end on a high note. Yes, that is an alert slider on the side there, which lets you flip from ring to silent to vibration with unmatched simplicity. More than the convenience, though, is what this might imply for the phone's future. I can't remember ever seeing an alert slider on an Android phone that didn't come from Oppo's sister company, OnePlus, a brand that regularly launches phones in the US. With OnePlus poised to launch a large format foldable in the States that's reportedly based on a nearly identical Oppo design called the Find N3, maybe there's hope that the Find N3 Flip could come to these shores as well, as a OnePlus Flip, perhaps. As you can see, it's got a widget for the Buds Pro all set up and ready to go. If it does, my wish list would include some better optimized software that doesn't bother me about the battery as often, a surface treatment that doesn't send the thing careening off as many countertops, and a cover display that doesn't randomly turn on in my pocket as often, but more importantly, actually keeps up with the competition and resists the urge to sit me at the kids' table. Otherwise, I think the Find N3 Flip will persist as an admirable, but confusing, missed opportunity. <laughs> yeah, I know, that one's a groaner. I, I came up with it all on my own, but a quick Google shows me that the earliest usage of that low-hanging fruit of a joke comes from Lance over at Tech Radar. so send all your bouquets and brickbats to him, please. This video was produced following several weeks with a pre-production Find N3 Flip review sample provided by Oppo, but as always, the manufacturer had no early preview of this review and no editorial input or copy approval rights whatsoever, nor did it provide compensation for this review. Folks, there are more foldables to come very soon. Subscribe and follow me on YouTube and Instagram at the Mr. Mobile, and I'm also on threads at Captain Two Phones to keep up between videos. Until next time, from Michael Fisher, thanks for watching. And stay mobile, my friends. So when Oppo invited me to the briefing for the Find N3 flip, that's not it. So when Oppo invited me to the briefing, especially since Motorola and Samsung have basically leaped frog them and leaped frog them. That's how we say that word. This is the winner. Here we come. Since Motorola and Samsung have basically leaped frog them. Son of a leap frog. Leap frog. <laughs> Damn it. All right. Leap frog them. Here it is. All the glamour of New York City. You put the skyline behind you, you end up shooting. Trash can. <laughs> Especially considering the fact that Motorola and Samsung have leapfrogged them, right? Right?